Hello everybody, this is Darkness. And this is Kijik. And welcome back to another episode of The Wolf Pit. Today we are going to travel back to the year 1985, the year of big hair, fast cars, and fingerless gloves, to feature you one of my personal favorite movies. That's right everybody, The Breakfast Club. The famous movie starring Emilio Estevez, Molly Ringwald, Anthony and Michael Hall, Judd Nelson, and Ali Sheedy. Now, Kijik, who was your favorite character in the movie and why? I'd probably have to say John Bender. Just, you know, his not give a shit about anything attitude. You know, not taking shit from authority. Especially that fucking principal. That guy was a dick. Oh, the guy who said. If you want the bull, you'll get the horns. Yeah. And the, and the famous point. The f I got you for two fucking weeks. It was months. It was two months. Two months. I got you for two months. I'll have you for your natural born life. I just... Eh. I don't get what the hell was up with the pinky pointing out as well. He was just trying to insinuate. I think it's so he can go from this to this real easily without having to be like, I gotta bring the pinky. Probably. Just he, he was half a tard. Well, yeah, you got you got to remember he probably just this wasn't really he wasn't very famous back then. He was in a couple. No, I think the character. I mean, I, I don't think it was so much the. I think he was meant to be stupid, just so he to could a be, degree. Just so he could be outwitted by six teenagers. Five. Was it was a five. I thought it was six. No, it was five. It was five. The nerd, the jock, Bender. The goth, gothic emo girl and the prom queen. Yeah. Um, my favorite was Emilio Estevez just because he went through a lot, a lot of shit. Yeah, he was a go uh, jock, but he had to deal with a lot of shit from his parents, from his coach, from the school, from the principal. Everybody thought highly of him, and any time he did something wrong, they went. Well, yeah, that's, ape shit on him. That's what happens though when you get into a position that he, you know, gets into the position that he was in back then. Well, yeah, he, he was, was the head of the fucking football or the not the football. He was a wrestling team. team. He was the head of the wrestling team. He was the Letterman jacket person. He just had a lot on his plate. Mm -hmm. That's Which, a lot of pressure. Okay, now what was your favorite scene in the movie? Probably them running through the hallways. Just uh, just the montage of them running through the hallways and yep, avoiding the, the principal is somehow not not at all seeing them even though yeah. like it's a millisecond away. Yep. Um, my favorite would have to be the really 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 hard scene to watch was when uh, Molly Ringwald put the lipstick between her breasts and did the little lipstick trick, and then everything got real fast um, because it went to Emilio Estevez. Because they all got real upset because Bender was being kind of an asshole. And Emilio Estevez was talking about um, how he super glued a kid's butt cheeks together. And really, that's a really strong message. But nobody really reckoned. This movie's a really strong message about a lot of different things. But um, just to get a little off topic, um, with the whole Emilio Estevez thing. I could relate to the kid that he actually glued his butt cheeks together because I know that that kid probably had to suffer from a lot of shit. He probably had anxiety issues. He probably had depression. He probably thought about suicide after all that shit happened because he had to get his butt cheeks surgically like removed from each other because they were like super glued together. Um, and that's a lot of that's a big thing now with uh, society. I'm getting off topic about the movie, but we'll come back to it. I'm gonna talk to you now. I'm sorry. I'm gonna talk straight to oh, the no, camera because no. this is this is something you guys need to realize. Um, I know this was a movie, but back in the '80s, they have a lot of the shit that we're dealing with right now. Bullying is a really serious problem. That kid who got his butt cheeks glued together had to probably go through therapy. He probably had problems with psychological problems because he always thought somebody was coming to get him. He probably had to, he probably didn't trust anybody. And I'm not saying that this actually happened because it didn't say anything in the movie, but there's a good chance that this kid probably did end up committing suicide later on in life. Or he might have actually have done it like after the events of this happened. It could have traumatized him so badly 
that he just lost it and had to just kill himself. And I can relate to that a lot because me personally, and we're going to get real personal here. This is about to get real hard. If you guys want to stop watching this at any time, if it just makes you uncomfortable, if it makes it hard for you to watch, just stop the video. Nobody's going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. He's not going to judge you. This is just real talk. For me personally, I had a friend in high school that had the same exact problem. He didn't have his butt cheeks glued together because it's a movie and that doesn't really happen that I know of. But one of my best friends, he was a bigger guy. I've known this guy since I was in seventh grade. Me and him were friends for a very, very long time. I knew everything about him through the seventh up to my senior year. I talked to him every day. I knew a lot about what was going on at home with him. I knew he had a lot of problems with his family and everything. But my senior year, pretty close to prom time, I found out that my best friend actually shot and blew his own brains out because he was being bullied by people at school. Now, I don't know what finally pushed him over the edge because I talked to him a lot. I know he had a lot of emotional problems. People were making fun of his weight, how he looked, how he carried himself and stuff. And that's that's not cool. That's not at all. And I noticed it's been years since I've been in school. I'm not going to say how much time, but... Uh, I've seen lately a lot of suicides from a lot of more people in my class. I've lost so far four people for suicide. And it's, I'm not saying it's all because of bullying, because it's not. It's probably not a lot of bullying at all. But it's probably got something to do with stuff that happened in school, stuff that's happening in life, the way people are treating other people. And that's just not cool, people. Be more kind to people. I know somebody from work that's actually been threatened to lose their job and get the shit kicked out of them just because they're doing their job. Just because they're being a normal person. And we got people threatening them via text message, via Facebook, and all kinds of like other shit. People are threatening this person at work. And that's not cool. Just, if you don't have something nice to say to somebody, just don't say anything at all to them. But if somebody's having problems try to be there for them try to if, at least just say hi say anything at all just acknowledge that you're there if something is going on and they need somebody be that person be the person that you can be for them even if it's just giving them a hand to hold giving them a shoulder to cry on just giving them anything just to show support and if you got if you're having problems with somebody Talk it out. Maybe it can be resolved. If not, if that person's just being an asshole just because they're being an asshole, just ignore that person. Just don't don't deal with it. It you can't completely avoid the situation, but if if it escalates and it gets worse and they're not letting you leaving you alone, talk to somebody else. Like if you're at work, talk to a supervisor or talk to somebody in HR or talk to somebody higher up in management. Anything. Just talk to somebody. If you're in high school, this is for high school kids as well. If you're having problems with a bully and somebody's messing with you, making you feel like shit, and you're having anxiety and depression and thoughts of suicide, go talk to somebody. Go talk to a teacher. Go talk to your best friend if you have one. Go talk to the principal. Go talk to a guidance counselor. Go talk to anybody. There are people out there that will help you take care of the situation. Maybe the person that's bullying you has some problems of their own and they need to express it. They're expressing it the wrong way, obviously, by bullying, but they have to express their frustrations. Maybe they're having problems at home. Maybe they're having problems with their social life, their girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. And it, it, we're a community here. I'm a community, he's a community. If you need somebody to talk to, hell, you could talk to me and him. We're, yeah, we're YouTube people, but we're also human beings. We go through the same shit everybody else goes through. I've been made fun of. People thought I was gay when I was in high school because I was overly feminine towards women. I was always talking to women, laughing with women, touching women, hold, holding women and stuff. I got bullied a lot for that. I'm pretty sure he's been bullied a lot for... I don't know. what if, Have you ever been bullied before for anything? I'm going to let him talk because I'm saying my piece. I'm going to let him talk and let him discuss anything that's ever happened to him. But in closing with me, 
just if you need somebody to talk to, do not be afraid to talk to anybody about anything. S school, work, home, there is somebody there to talk to. Now, I'm going to let him talk. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I got made fun of a lot. What did you get made fun of for? Being, at, being from out of town. Like, we first moved down here from up north, and my, fa my family was the main culprits of it. That was the bad part. Your family was making money a lot? My cousins, yeah. I got into fights, like, almost on a daily basis because I was from up north. I was from a different state. And when they found out that I wasn't born in that state, that I was born from down south, I got more shit for it. And, so, and I also got made fun of for being overweight. Now, did, have you ever had thoughts of suicide? Oh, yeah. Lots of times? Like, have you ever actually tried it? No. No? But you thought about it before? A few times, yeah. Now, did, were you able to talk to anybody about your problems? Yeah, I had one friend come through for me. Or, now, did it help out a lot? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be here if, I, if it didn't. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about right there. He had somebody to talk to. I've had somebody to talk to. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you. This guy has helped out a lot with my social life, my emotional life, my relationship-wise, my everything. I've had a lot of problems. I look like a happy person. I look like I'm just eager to take on the world. But there's a lot of stuff that you guys don't know. I'm not going to dwell on that because that's not the point of this video and we're going to go back to the movie here in a minute but this this right here we we do this yes to entertain but it's also to send a message out to people that anybody can do anything that they want to do if they can set their mind to it and have a good positive attitude about it and we did this first to entertain but we do this also to send messages if we need to about anything that's going on in life, get our frustrations out, and get our emotions out, and everything, and it's a, it's a good outlet. Yeah. Now, now that we got through all that, if you guys are still with us, still tuned in, um, we're gonna talk talk back about the movie and um, what would you like to talk about? Like, what do you think about the song? Don't you forget about me. Written by the Simple Minds group. What What do you it wasn't think? Wasn't written by them. Um, it was originally written for uh, Billy Idol. Oh, was it? Yeah, but he turned it up or turned it down for reasons I can't remember. And then Simple Minds took it over. Simple Minds took it over, and it actually launched their career in the United States. Now, do you think the song actually has a hidden message behind it? It might. I don't know. It's been a while since I've actually listened to the original version of it. I mean, anymore. I've heard of re I've heard remixes and the uh, it's even fe featured on Pitch Perfect. Yeah, Pitch Perfect did do a, a kind of like two minute s skit of it. Yeah, but I mean, like it. Like I said, it's been forever with just the way music is nowadays. You know, it's just they'll take something from back then from the 80s and mix it up with some new shit and don't even recognize it now anymore. I'm gonna ask a serious question if you could describe yourself as one of the characters in the movie which person would it be who do you relate to the most probably the nerd the nerd Anthony Michael Hall's character yeah why because I was the outcast in school now did you did did you actually bring a flare gun to work like no. he did, or no? I, I didn't. I wasn't quite that rambunctious. Now he 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 did try that, and this goes back to uh, the bullying thing a little bit. He brought a flare gun. Spoilers: If he didn't know that he did this, Anthony Michael Hall's character brought a flare gun to school. That's how he ended up in detention because he was getting bullied at school, and he got tired of it. And he brought the gun to school to scare the bully. Just just to try to get the person off his back, just leave him alone. And it kind of backfired. Yeah, because it ended up being a flare gun and it exploded in his locker. Yeah, they had a funny moment, but that's a real moment. Like, he got to the point where he was going to try to hurt somebody because he's he got tired of their shit. Now, that's not the way it should have went down, but 
that was to, that was his way of solving the problem. He couldn't take it anymore. He was just gonna go ape shit on somebody. And violence is never the answer, no matter this, no matter what the situation is. And if you notice, like each character had problems. Uh, Molly Ringwald's character, the prom girl, the perfect girl, the preppy, hey, everybody love me and shit. She had a lot of fucking problems. She was dealing with just because she was a popular girl, she was perceived as just a popular girl. Like, they only seen her as the perfect, amazing girl, and they didn't see how smart she was. Nobody gave a shit about any of her interests. They just seen her as the popular prom queen. That was it. Yeah. And even Bender was that way. Like, when they first showed up, he only seen her as the prom queen, just like all of them. They all seen the characters... As like, their stereotype. Yeah. and The that, nerd was the nerd, the jock was the jock, the emo chick was the emo chick... The princess was the princess. And the and criminal was the criminal. They didn't see him as... They didn't see any of them as anything else but that. Yeah. But later on in the movie, they noticed that, wow, these people are actually people, and they have feelings and concerns and all kinds of shit like that. And they actually got more comfortable with each other, and they actually all became pretty good friends. Thank you for watching this. This has been our review of the movie The, the Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club. If you like this, please hit the like button below. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any suggestions of movies you'd like us to review, please comment below. And as always, this has been Darkness. And Kijik. And we will see all you dudes and, and ladies in, in the, the next, next video. video. And in the famous words of the Simple Minds, don't you forget, forget about, about me. Don't you forget about me. Don't, 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 don't. Don't you forget about me.